Hello everyone, Alex the RC Freak here coming at you with another video. An update video on my Losi DBXLE. So as you know, if you watched my running video, my bash video of it, um, I smacked a tree and broke the left front lower control arm. So um, what I'm here to show you guys is some parts I got for it. And also I just want to say this as a quick um, thank you to everyone and anybody who has taken a few moments of their time to watch my videos, subscribe to the channel, um, for all the kind comments. Um, please try to keep the comments PG. You know, I you know I don't appreciate the dis some people have did disrespectful comments, so I do not appreciate that. Um, but also, I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate all the comments. I try to answer every and any question or any comment that has um, been put on any one of my videos. I do my absolute best to answer every single one of them. So please, please do not be afraid to comment. Don't be afraid to ask me questions about anything. Any RC you may have, a project you may be working on, something custom, I may be able to help you. I'm pretty sure I probably will be able to help you. So... Um, like I say, I'm a super easygoing guy, very respectful guy. Please don't be afraid to comment. You know, as always, let's get on with the video. Okay, so what I got here is a set of control arms. Let me get a light on here so you guys can see. These are the factory Team Losi control arms, part number LOS25406. And this is for the LOSI DBXL gasoline and the electric version. So just so you know, these will fit. This is the arm set. The crappy part about LOSI is you have to get the whole complete lower control arm set. Just like the steering knuckles and rear hub carriers, you have to get the front steering knuckles and the steering knuckle C mount is what some people may call it. And the rear hubs all in one thing too. And it's kind of pricey. These are $43 online without tax. Um, I ordered this on eBay as I usually order a lot of my stuff. I smacked that tree and I broke it right here. I just snapped the control arm. But there's a trick you can do with control arms is you boil water. I've heard this. I've never tried it myself. So um, you boil water. It's a race trick. It's Alex Tech Tip race trick. So you boil water. You get it to boiling temperature, right? You stick control arms. Make sure the control arms are clean, clean of any dirt, uh, debris that may be on them. If you have used set that are still good, they're not broken. Um, you can stick the control arm in there and boil it for 25 minutes. Take it out, let it cool down naturally, and uh, it makes your uh, control arm more flexible so it's not so hard and stiff. Um, one thing I will say about the LOSI DBXLE, um, from my experience, is, is the stock plastic wheels are trash they break like glass they really do i've broken four now they break like glass you just bump a curb anything like that they break very easily so i'm just stating it as a fact so i'm going to put the proline mx 43 tires on there for my x max i got a blue castle creations fifth scale powered x max it's a monster and i bought those wheels for it uh, the MX-43s, and personally, I don't like them on the X-Max. They don't get jack crap for traction. But I don't also like a lot of the fist scale, true fist scale uh, wheels that you find on the internet. Like, I don't like Mad Max. I don't like the look of the wheels. I don't like the look of the tires. They're way overpriced, in my opinion. Um, King Motor, they have stuff on eBay or online also for wheels and tires. Um, the King Motor T2000... With the chrome wheels, the four-wheel drive Baja 5T. Um, they're the only ones that make that. Four-wheel drive Baja 5T is the King Motor T2000 is what it's called. The stock wheels on that with the chrome wheels, I do like. But at the same time, I don't really like the tire tread block design. So um, I'm going to put the Proline MX 43s, which I think with a heavier vehicle, they will grip a little better. Um, the X-Max isn't that heavy. My, my X-Max, my castle powered one, is a fairly heavy vehicle because I have so many upgrades on it. But anyway, back to the DBXLE. So these basically what you do is you stick the control arms in boiling water for 25 minutes. And uh, it's supposed to make them more flexible, in theory. I've never tried it, so I can't guarantee it'll work for you. 
But uh, you just boil them for 25 minutes as stock arms or any plastic. You do that to hubs too, steering hubs. Um, I may try it and see what it does. Uh, like I say, I can't guarantee it's going to work, but I just want to show you that. And then also I just want to mention we got a lot of surprise snow just a couple days ago, so I won't be doing any running videos for until the snow melts. We got a lot of it. We got like nine inches, so we got pretty good, and we're supposed to get more. So I apologize for that. I, won't, I don't run my vehicles in the snow. Anyone who watches my channel, I've said that before, I will not do it. So here's what I really want to show you. Packaging! No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, so what I got here is an upgrade. So it's from Josepher USA. It's a performance place. I got this on eBay. This is for the Losi DBXL or M Losi MTXL gasoline versions. So keep in mind, the gasoline version has this place right here, this little skid plate in the center for the spur gear. So basically this will protect the spur gear because if you have a low DBXL E or MTXL or DBXL where the spur gear goes with center differential, um, there's a hole there in the chassis. So if you hit a jump and you, your chassis goes in the ground right there, like scrapes in the ground, you could bring little tiny rocks and get it stuck in the teeth and it could damage the spur gear or the pinion gear or the clutch bell on the spur gear if you have a gasoline version. So they never stated that this will work on the DBXLE, but I can pretty much guarantee that where the center differential is hasn't changed how it's mounted. So this just goes, you got the center differential uh, brace, you sit in there, and this will just bolt up right on the bottom of the chassis onto that brace. So, and it covers that hole, which is really nice. So if you look, the back of it has a little cutout there. Let me just cut, take these out of the packaging here and I'll be happy to show you. So, let me just, it's always nice to have a good pair of scissors. So, all right, let's start off with the center skid plate here. So, like I will say, this is super light metal. It's chamfered edged, CNC machined. It's, uh, you know, angle cut right here. So the countersunk, the, so the tapered screws, the flat top screws that are tapered will fit in there nice and flush. And this is nicely 30 degrees chamfered all the way around. It's kind of sharp on the edges, so be careful when you're holding it. But what I'm talking about is this right here. This little cut right in here is where I'm talking about. So it is very important, I feel, um, so that way your spur gear don't rub. But it'll cover that. So I'm going to try it. And, you know, worst case scenario, the low C DBXL, they do sell these on eBay for the low C DBXL E. It doesn't come with this center skid plate. I wanted this center skid plate. I can almost guarantee it will work. So I will be doing an install video, just so you know. And here is the front skid. Now, one thing I'll say about this aluminum, it does kind of feel cheap. It doesn't feel like high quality, really durable aluminum. There's different qualities of aluminum, believe it or not. So um, there's some really cheap old quality aluminum. For example, Integi, Team Integi, aluminum hop-ups. Their aluminum is like super cheap. It'll bend. It'll tweak very easily. Keep that in mind. Trust me, I've used it before. So, but this, you know, these are three and a half millimeters thick. They're chamfer edges, you know, 30 degrees. They countersunk holes there. This uses your original hardware. What I mean by that is it uses your original screws to hold on your bulkhead. And which is nice. And what the nice thing is about having these skid plates is they add a little bit more thickness to your chassis. And also, they are like a skid plate. So when you're buggy, because it doesn't have very long shock shafts, it will bottom out when you jump it. Because it's so big, at least where I currently live, there's no racetrack big enough for a vehicle of that size. So it's more, for me, a basher vehicle. So um, anyway, it's nice to have a skid plate with these chamfered edges. So that way it's not like straight, you know, where it just digs in and plows dirt. But this will help protect your chassis and it'll give it a little bit more strength too. So uh, I, th I feel like it's a very good upgrade to have. These edges of these aluminum parts are very sharp. So like I say, be careful. This is the rear skid plate. And it's very nicely done too. And that's what I, I like the best is I want this for the rear skid plate. I got them in silver. They come in black, red, silver, I think blue. Don't quote me on the blue one. But uh, I know they do come in black and red, so um, 
yeah, they are pretty nicely. This one feels pretty good, pretty thick. You know, and what's nice is it'll add 3.5 millimeters thicker to your chassis. So your chassis is already 4 millimeters thick, the actual solid chassis part. Then it has a chassis brace in the center of it where everything kind of bolts onto. And that's probably another like 3 millimeters thick in that area though. But it bolts in the center of the chassis. So if you actually had a real DBXLE that you could look at, you would know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, basically, yeah, so it's a pretty nice, you know, built pieces. Maybe they are more durable than they feel. I mean, they do feel super light, kind of like chintzy aluminum. But I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying they do feel like a pretty light aluminum, which aluminum is supposed to be light, I know. But I don't know. It's one of those things that you'd have to personally feel in your own hands to understand exactly what I mean. And I'm trying to explain it to the best I can. But, um, yeah, so I just want to do kind of a showing you guys uh, what I've been doing, uh, what's been going on. Uh, if you haven't checked out my low city bashing video, please do. I got a Hobby Wing Max 5 ESC. Um, when I broke it, I was running Florian 40C 6S, um, 8,000 milliamp hour batteries in it. And those are good batteries. They're not really a high powered battery for like punch and like really fast acceleration, but they're really good battery for a long run time. So if you're just kind of looking just to have you know, fun, we're just bashing and just having a little bit of longer run time and you're not looking for the most power, every ounce of power you can possibly push through it, they're a good battery. But if you're wanting like the most power you can do for wheelies and crazy stunts, don't get the batteries. They won't do it for you. They don't have enough power at all, not even a tiny bit. So they're just, they're just a good long run time battery. That's what I like them for. So anyway, as always, thank you so very much for watching my videos. And if any and all who've liked them, comment, subscribe. I sincerely appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I don't take anything for granted, just so you know. I'm, I'm here for you guys to help you guys. I want to share my knowledge with you, and I'm more than happy to help anyone with any questions, anything like that they may have. So, you know, I can walk you through a project if you're, you know, stuck. Or, for example, if you bought a Losi DBXLE, I could walk you through, or gas, I could walk you through it. You know, if you're new and that's your first RC and you just stepped it up and got a badass one right out of the box, you know, seriously, I recommend you take it apart completely and make sure the diffs are lubed on the DBXLE because I can guarantee they weren't. Mine wasn't. None of the shocks were lubed. My back shocks only had a quarter uh, filled with oil. So I'm just letting you know, go through the whole kit, make sure everything's tight, you know, and uh, I'll, I'll be more than happy to walk you through it. So please, please do not be afraid to comment. Don't, you know, if you have any questions, no question stupid at all. No question is stupid. You know, I'm, I'm open to talk about it. So please, like I say, I'm more than happy to talk about it. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I just thought I'd share you a trick with the control arms. It's kind of a bummer you have to buy them all. The Traxxas X-Max, you can buy one lower control arm or the upper control arm. Um, I do like that. This, they don't do that that way. But I guess if you look at it in the positive attitude, you got extra parts. And these will work on the right and left side. And another note, on the right front control arm and the left rear control arm, there's stainless steel screws. So keep in mind, the stainless steel cap head screws on the lower control arm if you're in case if you're wondering if you're new, those are lefty tighty, righty loosey. So um, turn it right to loosen the screw, turn it counterclockwise to tighten it. So it's kind of weird in that sense. I'm not really sure why they did that. It's kind of a loosey thing, is why they do that. So I just wanted to make that note to you. Um, I might do an install video on how to install this control arm because I don't think anyone has one up and they're pretty easy uh, I, I took off the original one already so I'll, I'll do an install of one of these for you um, I'm probably gonna boil these and try it it's worth a shot you know don't get it so you know keep in mind don't leave it in there so the plastic gets so so hot that you could melt the plastic so like I say 25 minutes just bring the water to a boil you don't have to have a super mega boiling just bring it to a boil 25 minutes, put it on a timer. After that, take it off immediately. Don't let it sit there any longer, okay? Um, that's just kind of a race trick. 
And in theory, they say it makes the plastic more flexible. Like I say, I have never tried it. That's a disclaimer. I have never tried it, so I can't guarantee it'll work for you. If you want to try it, awesome. And if you try it before me, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear about it. So, anyway, just want to tell you kind of what I'm doing. Um, some parts I got. Um, I may be doing another video tomorrow. I may be switching my connectors on my smaller 8th scale and smaller RCs to a different connector than the Traxxas connector. I've been running the Traxxas connector for years. Um, I'm kind of starting to feel that it's not as adequate of a connector as I would like it to be. So, I'm going to be changing connectors on all my smaller RCs. My fit, my 1 6 scale and 1 5 scale electric powered RCs are running Castle Creations 6.5 millimeter connectors. So, um, what you need to run something like that, some big heavy duty connector that's 200 amp rated and Castle Creation 6.5 millimeter connectors are the only connectors on the market right now currently that are 200 amp rated constant, consistently. So, they, there's a brand called XT, they make the XT90 plugs. Um, XT 150s and 120s are rated for 120 amps continuous or 150 amps amps continuous so um i suggest castle if you have a low cdb xle the stock four millimeter or four and a half millimeter plugs are not adequate for that size of vehicle but anyway thank you so very much for watching my videos thank you and all you know to any and everybody who's commented you know liked subscribed i genuinely appreciate it from the bottom of my heart um all right hey, everyone have a great day and alex rc freak out peace